nursing practice relies on strong foundation of clinical judgment. So every three years, the NCLEX renews and checks their test plan to know if nurses meet the required knowledge to practice safely as nurses. So before they do this, they give some questions in the question bank to test how students and candidates are doing well while attending their NCLEX. And then in the period of the three years, they will have come up with a new plan to add into the current test plan. So for this NGM question, the sole purpose is to help nurses with clinical judgment and evaluation to make decisions rightly. And then you're going to be seeing questions appear like real life scenarios in the hospital. And then the clinical judgment is to make nurses to be able to apply whatever knowledge they have read in school because the NCLEX is actually for graduate nurse, nurses. That's why your nursing experience, having your certificates as an RN in the NCLEX means you're practicing as a new graduate nurse. So they want to make sure that you have the clinical judgment, to, you have the ability to make good clinical judgment and practice safely when you start. Okay, so, what it just measures is just clinical judgment. To use items alone and unfolding case studies. So the new thing there is that they're going to be adding case studies through the question banks. For the people who have written in class before, you can attest that there is nothing like case studies. You just see prioritization questions mostly. But this time around, you're going to be having standalone questions in addition to the clinical judgment questions, which are most likely the case studies. Next slide. Okay, so everybody has been afraid and um, we have a lot of uh, palpitations from candidates saying, oh boss, I don't want to go for the next generation NCLEX. I don't know what to expect. A lot of people have been booking their exams before now. So what is changing? We need to look at what is changing. That's the most important thing. When you know what is changing, your fears are allayed. So the traditional questions still remain. They are not pulling out the traditional questions. If you've been doing question banks, you've been attempting your questions, you will notice that you've already gotten acquainted to the traditional questions. So it still remains, but then they are going to be changing some things when it comes to the scoring. Currently on the NCLEX, there is nothing like partial credits. Nothing like you fail a question, you fail it all. For selector that apply, you're expected to get all points correctly to end one mark, but now they are trying to um, add partial credit. Next slide, we're going to now talk about, um, we've talked about what is changing. I already see that what is changing is the clinical judgment, um, partial credit, and then the traditional uh, method still remains. Now let's look at the clinical judgment function. According to the NCSBN, this is the clinical judgment measurements that they expect every candidate writing exams from the 1st of April to apply while attempting their NCLEX. We know about the nursing process where we have to assess our patient first and then after assessment, we move over to diagnosing patients, implementing our nursing knowledge on what we have diagnosed and then evaluating the outcome. But for, for the six clinical judgments, which they have tested for a very long time because before NCLEX brings in new system, before they change their test plan. Yes, we are, we are going to, yes, we are going to explain the partial credit. Hold on, let's talk about the clinical judgment. So this clinical judgment involves you recognizing cues. So you have them um, cues like the vital signs, patient history, patient medical history, patient objective data and subjective data. And then when you have these data, the clinical judgment and measurement wants you to gather these cues. When you recognize them, the next thing is to analyze these cues. When you analyze these cues, you can now make the hypothesis. So in our I am nursing process, you always say, okay, we're going to make a diagnosis. And then the next thing you're expected to do is to what? Generate solution for this problem you have identified. So when you have a case study, you are going to be giving objective and subjective data of the patient. You recognize them. 
Okay, the queue. The queue are just um, information about your patients, like vital signs, BP, patient telling you they have their feeling dizzy, subjective and objective data of the patient will be given to you in the case scenario. So they are all cues. You bring them all together and then you are able to analyze the cues. And then after analyzing the cues, you come to a hypothesis. Probably my patient is having this. Probably I'm looking at hypertension. Okay, so I see these, these cues, putting VP and putting this together. You, you kind of make a hypothesis and say my patient probably is having heart failure. And then, then you move to solutions. You look for solutions to get this patient um, the hypothesis, the, the, the diagnosis you've made, you look for a way to you know, get solution to it, and then you take action. Then action could be the, what's the most important thing to do on the question. Action could be what is the and, and best assessment. Action could be interventions to do for this patient. Hello, everyone. Oh, okay. 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 Sorry. Um. The the Zoom didn't allow the. Okay. It logged me out, and then boss has unmuted me. I'm sorry for that glitch. Okay. So next slide, we're going to we've talked about the six clinical judgment functions. So for your case study, you're going to be getting a lot of client cues, subjective and objective data. You recognize these data, you analyze them, you come to a hypothesis or uh, a diagnosis, probably you're looking at hypertension because in the options, you're going to be having differential diagnosis. So the most important thing for you is you need to know differential diag diagnosis of some conditions. What do I mean? You have pancreatitis, a patient can come with um, cholecystitis and you're looking at, could it be a topic pregnancy? Could it be, you know, you, you, you can't really, grabs what the patient is complaining about. So some, some conditions have the same signs and symptoms. They have the same signs and symptoms. So you need to know what takes this condition away from this condition, what differentiates, what, what differential diagnosis. Let's say a patient comes with low, left lower abdominal pain or right lower abdominal pain in the question, and then you're suspecting appendicitis. There's an option for a topic pregnancy. There's going to be an option for cholecystitis. So the only, way, the only way you're going to get the diagnosis correctly is, is when you look at the cues and you know what gives atopic pregnancy away. When the patients say, when you have the data like a missed period, there's a, uh, there's a missed period, there's amenorrhea, it now takes away the options of pancreatitis, appendicitis, or any other abdominal conditions you are probably looking at. So the next slide, we're going to be looking at We've talked about the clinical judgment function, what the NCLEX expects in the case studies. So now in the NGN questions, the NGN questions you're going to be seeing on the 1st of April has standalone question. These ones are not case studies, but they come with their, they, 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 are, they, are, they come with only one question in the, in the option. But the case studies come with six questions. So item one, item two, item three, item four, item five, item six, all belong to one case study. 
So we have in the new generation, in the next generation in class, you're going to be having standalone clinical judgment question where the data will be given and the question is just one. You're going to also have a case study question where you're going to be having six items and you're going to be having these six items all from the whole scenarios in the NCLEX and question that the case study that is being given. So that is what you're going to be seeing on the 1st of April. And then in addition, the traditional questions that we have stands, the traditional question, that means the classic questions of prioritization and all that stands. But here you're going to be, in addition to that, you're going to be seeing clinical judgment that are standalone questions and case studies that are made up of six questions. Next slide. Let's look at, um, we've talked about the, the next year, what we're expecting now. Now, what is new? What is new? We have already talked about it. We are going to be seeing the clinical judgment play out in the case studies. We are going to be seeing ourselves solving case study scenarios. And then we are going to be seeing a different approach to endless questions. So we're going to be developing both the ability to prioritize. We also need to develop the ability to think critically. You're able, you're able to you know, bring cues together. So when you're reading this time, Okay, okay, so he muted me, okay. Okay, so, so when you're reading it this time around for the NCLEX, you want to pay close attention to assessment of your patients. Let's say you're reading neurological conditions. You want to know the assessment of each neurological condition. If you're reading um, endocrine conditions, you want to really know what gives a particular condition away. Else, when you launch questions on the NCLEX, on that, um, um, on your okay, let's say your question banks, you're going to be seeing questions that you're having differential diagnosis. And the only way you can spot and get it correctly is if you know what an assessment of a particular condition is, you wouldn't be able to get the correct diagnosis from the cues. So the next slide, we talk about what is new. Now let's go into proper, let's go proper into what we have all. Okay, so what is changing? is that the methodology of scoring, most of us said that, that the scoring method is going to change. The next slide, we're going to be looking at the scoring method. So uh, in the, in the first thing I talked about was the, the clinical judgment cases is one of the things we are seeing. Now is the methodology of scoring. So currently on the NCLEX, we have all correct. You must have all options correct in your selector that apply to get your mark in your standalone questions, in the current endless, in your objectives, you must have all points correct. In your drag and drop, you must have all points correct to get um, a point. There is no credit, there is no partial credit for understanding. So let's say you have a selector that apply and um, they ask you to select the following interventions and then you have good knowledge of three. And then the option is the correct option is four. And you select three that you know. NCLEX will not acknowledge your partial understanding of three. They expect you to have the four in check for you to get your score. But in the next generation NCLEX, there is room for partial credit. This is just a way to acknowledge it, acknowledge candidates who have the knowledge to at least attempt three and maybe leave out one. And this reason is because if a candidate can get three options and another candidate can get two, another candidate can get one, and the correct option is four, at least the person with the highest point should receive something. Then there's also um, the, um, the scoring method proper, plus minus scoring method. We're going to be seeing it as we move forward. So just have to know there is a plus minus scoring method. There is a zero over one scoring method. There is a rationale scoring. So the next slide, we're going to talk about each, each of them individually. Okay, so the zero one scoring method. 
like we all know, like I said earlier, this is the new method of scoring for the next gen N class. You earn one point for endorsing each correct response. So let's say you have a selector that apply. This, this scoring method is a zero over one. Let's say the total number of scores you should get is four. Let's say the question should have four. And then you, you get one correctly, you earn a point. You get two correctly, you earn a point. You get three correctly, you earn a point. If you don't get any one correctly, you don't lose a mark for not getting it correctly, but you will not earn a mark. So what this scoring method is going to be looking out is just your correct answer, you get a mark for it. So you earn each point for endorsing the correct response. And then you're not going to be giving, um, you're not going to be um, having a negative um, marking where you are removed, where, you, where they remove mark from the ones you didn't get correctly. So at the end of the question type, they will add all the points you got correctly. And that is what it is. So the next slide, I've talked about the zero one scoring method. The next slide, let's now look at questions that follow this zero one scoring rule. Let's look at this type of questions. The next slide, this, this is now where the main thing is. The zero over one scoring method, we have the multiple choice item. So currently on the NCLEX, we have multiple choice in the, in the traditional NCLEX now. And then this current NCLEX before the 1st of April, in your multiple choice questions, when you get one point correctly, let's say you have four, one point, you earn a point. But if you don't get it correctly, you lose a point. That's the multiple choice. That still stands for the next generation in class. So the next slide, we're also going to look at the scoring method that goes with this. So this is just what we are used to, where we ask, where we get, where we get a response on one question in multiple choice. So this one is still stands for the next gen generation in class. So the next slide, we also look at another example of um, zero over one scoring method. Another example is the matrix multiple choice item. Okay, so this is another question type on the end class that is going to be among this, most likely the standalone or case study. It can come as a standalone item or it can come as a case study. So here you're giving options to pick. And then if you find any answer, correct, you click it. But then if you get an option correctly, you earn a mark. If you don't get the option correctly, you lose a mark. So let's look at this example. Look at the patient assessment findings. The question is improved, no change, declined. If, you, if the question says improved and you tick it, you get a point. And then the BP, you click it, you, you lose the mark, you failed it, but you do not lose a mark. So what, what I will advise in this type of question is go for the options you are very sure that is correct. Once you get the options correct, at the, by the side, you look at how the total marks have been added. Four points, that's what you get in this question. So this question is five, and then you add all the points together you get four total, and then the one you didn't get a mark, you don't, you don't lose a mark for not getting it correctly, and you don't get a mark for not getting it correctly. So at the end of the day, you had four over five. The next slide, this is matrix multiple choice item method. It goes for the zero over one scoring method. Then the next one is the, um, ex um sorry. So the example of, um, no, the back, 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 back. Okay. Okay, so we are talking now, this one is a, the multiple response method. Okay, so this method is also going to be going with the zero over one scoring method. So you'll be given a lot of multiple options like the options are going to be up to six, seven, eight, sometimes nine. And then they will tell you the exact amount of 
question, um, response they want, they will tell you four. In this option, you can't pick more than four. So you can't click more than four options. Like we have here, we have six options. And the question says, select four findings that require immediate follow-up. You cannot go more than four, but then you can get the four correctly and you can also lose some marks by not getting some correctly. So let's say we have the vital signs in check. You have your client orientation as an option. Don't worry, I'm going to practice questions to put this into consideration. Because most times when we don't see this thing play out, we may not be able to understand. So in this, um, in this example, this is where you have multiple response. It's not the normal select all that apply, no. Here you're giving more than three, four, five, six, and then you're asked to select just three, two, four. The question tells you. So another thing I'll be adding is, please make sure you read your questions correctly. Because sometimes, Candidates don't read their questions correctly. Sometimes when I'm having a section and someone will tell me, oh boss, I didn't see this was select or that apply. So one of the things you're going to be doing for yourself in the next generation question, because there are a lot of instructions on this next generation question. And there are a lot of instructions. So you're going to be paying attention to the instruction because once you click the next option, you can't go back. Even in your question banks, both Archer and UWord, for those that have question banks, once you click your answer, you can't go back. So you need to, you need to be very careful, read your question very well. And this is four findings. That means you can't go more than four, but you can get two incorrectly. If it is six, it means two might be correct. Two will not be correct. So this method goes for the zero over one scoring. What it means is that you don't lose a point for getting an incorrect answer you don't lose a point. So zero over one. So when you do questions on question bank and you see zero over one scoring method, it means, it means the zero over one scoring method means you got the answers correctly. You get a mark, the ones you got correctly. You failed the ones you didn't get correctly, but you did not lose a mark. The next slide, we're also going to look at another item that looks like the zero over, that goes with the zero over one point that goes with that too. Okay, okay. So this is the example of the drop down close item. Okay, this goes with the zero over one scoring method. So what this means, you're going to be having, this, 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 this question type mostly goes with the stand alone clinical judgment questions where you're going to be giving cues, like I said earlier, after reading your patient cues, the nurse, has reviewed the, the nurse's notes entries from 1330 to... Okay, someone said, will the, will the, I didn't get that question. Will the scoring method be put on each question? At the end of, yes, on the question bank, at the end of your, your, your practice on the question bank, most question banks, when you click the answer, you, you see the scoring method, it comes in. It comes out, you see it, except the ones where you have to finish the clinical judgment question before you see the, the answers and the scoring method. So in this one, you're going to be having response like our normal, um, those days in secondary school, where you see putting the correct answer kind of question. Yeah, so you're going to be having a, a, a long note Along the line, you're going to select the correct answer. So that also takes us back to the clinical judgment we talked about. Yes, you're going to be having a lot of, you know, challenges with instructions. If you don't read your instruction very well, that's the first thing you notice when you have started practicing your NGN questions, that instructions are the most important thing here. Then when you now start getting used to these question types, uh-huh. So you're going to select an option and select the next option and select the next option. At the end of it, if you get them correctly, zero over one scoring, you do not lose a mark for not getting the correct answer and you get your mark correctly. The next slide. So this is what we call the drop down close item where you're going to click on the mouse drop because on that day you're going to be having a mouse. You click on the option and it comes down and then you select the item. So 
The next one is that still maintains the zero over one scoring method. No, no, back. There's, sorry, mistake. Okay, so the zero, oh, we are still on the zero over one scoring method. Another example is the drop down table item. You can attest that this is not in the current endless and traditional questions you practice now. They are the NGN questions. So here, you're going to be having potential nursing intervention. When you click on select, options drop, you select your option. And when you select the option correctly, the points are by the sides. For each point you get, you get the point correctly, but you do not lose a mark for not getting it correctly. And you do not get the point for not getting it correctly. So the next slide is the bow tie. The bow tie is another question type. So if you look at it, it looks like a bow tie, two action to take, two parameters to monitor, and then and in the middle, you have the condition most likely experiencing. So that the first thing you need to do in this type of question, in the bow tie type of question, you will be having a question, and then the first thing to do is to identify what your patient's problem is. So if you, if you remember when we talked about the clinical judgment measurement, we said when we get the client cues, the objective and the subjective data, we kind of make a hypothesis, try to diagnose our patient and say, okay, probably patient is having heart failure. So you are going to click here and drag it down and choose the correct answer. Then the action to take, if you say the patient is having heart failure, don't worry, we are going to practice questions and you see these things play out and you're going to be the ones giving me the answers because that's going to be reflecting how well we have understood this. Then we are going to now look at the action to take. The action to take is now give fluid options. If you know the correct diagnosis, you should know the action to take that is correct. You also know the parameter to monitor that is correct. So that's about the bow tie. And it also goes with the zero over one scoring method. The next slide, we're also going to look at another question type that goes with zero over one. Okay, that's all. So this is um plus and minus scoring method. So we are done with the question types that goes with the zero over one method. Now this scoring method means that you earn a point for endorsing the correct response. But when you click on the incorrect response, you don't get a point, rather you lose a point. So at the end of the question, you'll add all the points together and subtract the ones you failed. So this kind of question mostly plays out, this query method mostly plays out on select order apply. So my, my advice is when you're doing your practice question, start practicing to go with the one you're very sure of. And this is not the time where you want to select all, like, okay, let me select all and make sure that um, they are all correct to get a point. So let's say you have select order apply and you're sure of three. Choose the three. The three you get correctly, you will earn a point for getting them correctly. But when you click one option that is wrong, you will lose a mark from the three. So the three is now three minus one. So you're ending up with two, two points. But I didn't mean you didn't click that wrong point. You'll be going with three points. So let's look at questions that follow this um, scoring method. Now, next slide, we're going to be looking at the question types that follow this method. So look at the multiple resp response, select order, apply item. So in this multiple resp, we don't have it currently on the traditional and classic and endless question. Uh, we this, these are the question types you will see on 1st of April launching. So you'll be having multiple response, no more uh, the normal select order apply that is four, five. This one you'll be having up to nine, eight. So here you're going to select the one you think is the answer. Now, this type of question, they don't tell you choose four or choose three, unlike the zero over one question where you're asked to choose, just choose four findings, then you're limited to four. Here, you're at liberty to choose as many options as you wish. But then the thing there is you lose a point for getting any point correctly. Any question, any option you get incorrectly, you lose a point. So let's say you get um, three here, 
and the, the one here is not correct. So look at the down, you're going to be seeing three points correct response minus one point incorrect response. So the patient, you're going with two points alone. So how do you mean you were not sure of that point, that option? The best thing is not to go for it. Just don't go for it. Just stick with your three and you're getting your three points on without any hassle. So the next, we're going to also look at the next question type that obeys the that obeys the minus and plus um, scoring method. The another example is the matrix multiple response item. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, so this type of question you're going to be having multiple response, just like in the other um, zero over one scoring method. Okay, so this question, can everybody hear me? Someone says, I can't hear again. Am I muted again? We can hear you. Okay. We can hear you. Okay, so, okay, okay, you can hear me, okay. So let's continue. So this example of um, the zero, of, um, zero plus and minus scoring method, what it means, you're going to be having multiple response to select from. And this also comes sometimes in the case study. Yes, it comes with this case study type of um, clinical judgment, measurement, question type. Okay, so when you have Bowell obstruction, for example, finding assessment. That's when I said, now currently, why, when reading for your ankles, currently, when reading for your ankles, you want to pay close attention to your client assessment findings. Very, very important. Very, very important. So let's say you're reading about heart failure. You want to you know, know what gives heart failure away. You want to know what gives pulmonary edema. What I mean by what gives it away is when you see one, two, three, four, you want to know that, that this is the findings. Because when you get clinical judgment questions, you're going to be having options that look alike. And except you're very sure, you will not get it correctly. So look at the findings in this question. The question says the nurse is reviewing the client's assessment data. So you are looking at the client's assessment data. For each assessment findings below, click to specify if the finding is cons consistent with the disease process of Bowell obstruction. So you see where it is? So if you don't know what findings you should be expecting in disease conditions, the NGN questions are going to be tough for you. So when you're reading your NCLEX now, make sure you want to write down the findings. These findings and interventions are very important now in NGN questions. This is no more, this is no more where someone said it's confusing to, differentiate the two metrics. When you practice questions, you will know the difference. At the end of your question in question banks, you will see the question, the answers, and you will see the scoring method. It will be written there. So once you see the scoring method as plus slash minus, just know it goes with negative, positive um, scoring method, where for each mark you've gotten correctly, you get a point, and from each mark, you don't get correctly, you lose the point. So someone can attempt all options, get three correctly, get three incorrectly, and end up with zero points. So with this question, it says appendicitis or ruptured spleen. Each findings may support the disease process. So let's look at the assessment findings. Appetite. Do you think you will see appetite in bowel obstruction, in appendicitis, or ruptured spleen? Do you see pain, what pain level in bowel obstruction and appendicitis? So these are the options you're going to be having. So the next slide, we're going to be looking at another um, example of um, question that goes with the plus and minus option. So do you understand this? Um, do you understand the plus and minus scoring method? Do you have any problem with it? Now, the next one is the multiple response grouping item. Okay, someone says, yes, she understands this. Okay, so the multiple response, okay, okay. Multiple response grouping item. In this question type, you're going to be having multiple response 
but this is going to be coming in groups. That's what it means, multiple response grouping item. The multiple response is going to be coming in group. So if you look at this question, the question says for the neurologic body system, there is a group of question there, options there. That's the grouping. And that is also multiple response. And you will select what you feel or what you think is correct in each group. The respiratory group, look at the options there. So why I did it like this is so that we can understand when we lose a mark and when we end a mark. That's the reason why I kept it like this. So the first one, you see we end two marks for getting, for endorsing the correct options. In the respiratory, we got a mark, but we didn't get a mark in the next one. In the cardiovascular, we got a mark, we got a mark, but we didn't get a mark. And now look at the point at the end by the side. You notice that on the row, you notice that on the row, it's telling you that the first row, you end two points correctly. So your points were two because you didn't endorse any wrong option. So someone can go and be clicking options. If you click all options, it goes. But at the end of the day, you lose mark for endorsing the wrong option. And you gain mark for endorsing the right option. So at the end of the day, you go with the total of the subtract remaining. So the next slide you're going to be looking at Another scoring method, the rationale scoring method. Okay, so this is where the kind of um, problem comes in is in this, some candidates find it difficult to understand this um, scoring method. So in this scoring method, you're going to be giving options that comes in sequence. So the first option gives you the main point to answer the second option. So for you to get a point in this scoring method, you must have gotten the pair correctly. So you end a point when the two response are correct. Mm -hmm. So this type of question is to make sure you apply full understanding of the paired questions. For example, you'll be seen mostly in cause, effect, rationale, and all that. If you don't see if you don't get the first one correctly, you will not gain a point from the two, from the two um, question, from the two options. So if you see a question and you have two response in sequence, this you see it to be written. If you don't get the first one correctly and you get the second one correctly, you lose mark for both of them because for you to gain a point in this rationale scoring, you must get the two options correctly. So this also boils down to being able to understand what causes your client's problem. So when you're reading your, your con client's condition, you want to know the pathophysiology of the cause and the effect of whatever condition your patient is having. So the next slide, you're going to be looking at question type that follow or that respect or that. Okay, the next one is the example. Now look at this question. It says complete the following sentence by choosing from the list of options. So the client is highest, the client is at highest risk of developing a stash evidenced by the client. You see, is a, a straight sentence. Is a straight sentence. So you see that if you don't get this one correct, it's not, it's even difficult to get the first one correctly and not get the, the other one correctly. So you need to know the first one for you to be able to answer the second one correctly in most times. So look at the first option, full credit. For getting the two options correctly, you earn your points, you go with your points. But look at the second, look at the down one, no credit is given because you got a point in one, in the first one, but you didn't get the point in the other one. So you lose the point for that question or you lose all the points. The next question, the next um, slide, look at another example. Now look at another one, no credits. Why? The person got the first one, but didn't get the second one. So in this rationale scoring method, your ability to end the score is by getting the two response correctly. 
Okay, so at this point, um, do you understand the scoring method or should we do you want us to talk about something else? I need response on the chat, chat, on the chat. Okay, so on the chat, on the chat box. Okay, so Joke say yes. Joke said yes, okay. Okay, Chijo Kechamaka said yes. Okay, so we can move on. Okay, 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 so. Okay, 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 thank you. We have a lot of um, responses. Okay, we understand. Let's go to the next slide. Now look at the overview of the whole item on the next gen questions. All current endless item types plus. So from 1st of April, all the traditional questions that you have been doing, they're also called classic questions. It stays. In addition, you'll be getting extended multiple response. We talked about the select order apply, select end, the multiple response grouping. You're going to be getting these question types in addition. So this is just the overview of the question item types you'll be seeing. So let's go to the next slide and talk about the another important thing for the next generation question. So look at an example that was slated here. So intentionally, intentionally we lose, yeah, intentionally we missed a point because I want you to understand the scoring method. So that's why you see this, the, the answers being failed. You understand? Not picking the answers correctly was an intentional act so that you can see the You can see the um, the scoring method. So this is a a question. At the end of the day, is a selector that apply question, and we are supposed to have four options correctly, but we endorsed three options, and out of the three, we have just two correctly. So at the end of the day, the two questions we got correctly, they subtracted the incorrect option, and then we ended up with one over four. So on your question bank, you're going to be seeing at the end of each question type, a type you practice, you will see a plus stroke minus scoring. Once you see that plus stroke minus scoring, scoring, it means for every incorrect option you endorsed, you lose a mark and ended up with just one over four or whatever the case may be. Okay, the next slide, that's just an example that was launched to talk about and um, give a, a closer look of what it looks like on the question banks. So someone said, um, please, what about the trend on the standalone? Okay. Next slide. So let's now talk about um, the similarities and the difference, the similarities and the differences between the current NCLEX and the future NGN questions. So, Currently on the NCLEX, we have five hours to attempt our question. It does still remains in the NGN questions. We have the five hours all allotted to you. Delivery method, the CAT still remains. Now what CAT does is a CAT doesn't want a situation where we have a, a junk of questions in the computer and Everybody comes to write the same type of question. Everybody comes to write the same type of question. Most of us can attest when it comes to CBT for the UK. You know, a lot of people say, I saw the same thing and all that. The questions are just there. Just read your book, attempt. No, for the CAT. Now, what CAT does is CAT wants to make sure that anybody that passes the end class is someone who the computer has deemed fit to be 93% confident to pass the end class and practice safely. So whatever candidate you are, if you are an intelligent candidate, you are an average candidate, that's why I tell my candidates, don't be scared that you can't pass the end class. Oh, I'm not intelligent. Some people use, yes, some people say, oh, boss, I'm old. I can't attempt the end class. I think it's for people who have hot brain. That's not, the, that's not true. Because the cut is designed in a way that you get your question based on your own ability. So when the question comes, the first question you get, 
starts at a particular point, let's say average peer is expected that all candidates in the hall can get have 50% chance of dating that question correctly. So when you get that question correctly, it takes you to the next question, which is a bit difficult, and that looks a bit difficult than the one you answered previously. If you don't get that option correctly, it takes you down. So at the end of the day, candidates who are highly intelligent, you will face challenging questions and difficult questions. So the question is being ordered by the computer. Computer adapts to your competence level. So if you're intelligent, you pass the NCLEX. If you're an average, you pass the NCLEX. You don't want a scenario where only intelligent candidates have the advantage of passing the NCLEX. That's why the CAT was designed. So the pass or fail decision, currently on the NCLEX, they use the confidence, um, confidence interval scale, where at 75, the computer shuts off when the computer is 95% sure that you will pass this exam, 93%, sorry. When the computer is 93% sure that you've passed the NCLEX, it shuts down, research pops up. Another question is the, Another way you're going to be getting your fail or pass decision is by the maximum item you, you, you attempted and they run out of time. So some people on the end class day, you see they tell you they run out of they run out of time. Maybe the five hours got hooked up at number um, question 125. Some say it's question 98. Any some people have even said 88, they lost the five hours. So at the end of it, even when you run out of time, the computer can still you know, go through the, quest the questions you've, you've attempted and then make a decision to say, okay, this person has passed or failed. So these are the three decision rules for passing the NCLEX. And that still continues for the NGN questions. Then the total exam length, there's a big change. Currently on the NCLEX at 75, the computer determines if you have passed or, 75, for people who have the minimum questions you can attempt currently is 75. That's the minimum question. So at 75 question, the computer can determine if you have passed or if you have failed. And the reason is because like we talked about this decision of passing and failing, the confidence interval. At 75 question, the computer will tell you 95%. It won't tell you, but the computer has ensure that you are 95, 93% um, able to pass this question. So the research will pop up. So some people who move to the next 76, 77, 78, they are still in the game. We tell them you are still in the game. You've not passed, you've not failed. Because if you have failed, the computer will have shut down. But for you to get the next question, it means the computer is still giving you the opportunity to prove to him, okay, prove to me, prove to me that you have 93%. That's just what it means. And then when you run out of time and the computer will now make the decision. And then when you get to the maximum question of 145, the computer will now finally make the decision. So people who shot at 75, what it means is that they have, the computer has determined that they have 93% chance of passing. They have, the computer has determined that and therefore research pops up. Then the clinical judgment, there is case study. There is nothing like that currently, it's not available. Okay, let's talk about the number of questions you're going to be getting in NGN. The, the least, the maximum number of questions you'll be getting is 85. So what happens in the NCLEX is that in the 75 that is currently now for the NCLEX, you're going to be scored only on 60 questions. 15 questions, you are not scored on them. That's just it, you're not scored on them. Then the standalone questions, currently on the NCLEX, 60 to 130 questions are standalone questions. But currently on the NCLEX, next generation question, you're going to be having 52 to 117 questions that are standing. What do I call standalone questions? Questions that are not selected that apply. Mm -hmm. Then that's what it is currently. Then, but then in the next generation question, standalone questions are questions where it is not attached currently to case studies, but you still have to go through clinical judgments to answer them. Then Another thing that is changing is in the next generation question, everyone is going to be having minimum of three case studies. Everyone is going to be having 
three case studies. Now, each case study has six points, six items, like six questions in each case study. Now, it means in your end class, if you're going to be shorting at 75, you're going to be having 18 questions coming from that um, case studies. So for one case study you, you meet on the end class, it has six items. You meet another case study, six items. Everyone will have that three case study. Now, the, the thing changes once you clock 75, the 75th question, and you have not, um, the computer has not popped up research, and you continue, then the computer now starts determining how, how long you stay on the question to know if it should give you clinical and the case studies or not. But at 75, before you get to say at 75, you will have gotten three case studies. And then you will get up to 52 standalone questions. Then the unscored questions currently on the end class is 15. Even in next generation question is next slide. I'm going to tell you how this thing is going to be distributed on that day. So the next slide, we look at how the case the clinical judgment questions be distributed. Okay, so this is the new test plan for 2023. Like I said earlier, every three years, NCLEs add something to your test plan. And there is nothing much compared to the last test plan. So some people read the NCLEs without knowing this test plan. This test plan is very important. It's just like not knowing what you're expecting on the NCLEs and you're, you're going for it. So safe and effective care environment. Here you have your management care. 15 to 21% of questions you'll get. Okay, let's go to the next slide so that we see it on the pie chart distributed. Now look at the next, this slide now. There is distribution of content for the end class. Now where you have 75 questions currently now on your end class, these are the distribution of questions you see. Let's start from pharmacology, you're getting 16% of your question. So if somebody, can somebody check for me 16% of 75 question, how many questions is it gonna give you on the chat box? On the chat box, let me see if you are having 16% of your question out of 75, how many questions is it supposed to give you on pharmacology? And we have math students here, right? No response. If you're going to be 12, okay, 12, okay, 12, 12, okay, I get that, 12, good. So on your end class, this is what you get. The, the questions you're going to be getting on your end class is allocated to this test plan. So 12, you all did the math and you found out that 12 questions have been coming from pharmacology and parenteral therapy, sorry. So let's get another mathematics. Um, how, how many questions you'll be getting for basic care and comfort? 9%. If you're getting 9% of your questions on basic care and comfort, how many percent, how many questions is coming from that um, um, particular content area? Do the mathematics 6% of 75 questions. That's the minimum question. Let's assume you get the minimum, the minimum question number of 85 from First April, currently 75, minimum, okay, seven, good. Seven questions coming from basic care and seven questions. So you need to study your test plan. The next, the next slide, we're going to be rushing it down so that um, I'll be dropping the test plan on the, on the group. I'll be, I'll be dropping the test plan on the group. You need to go through the test plan so that you can understand um, each content area what you are expected, questions are coming from this content area and what it looks like. Next slide, we're looking at this, um, look at management of care. We're not going to go through all that, but I just um, got it here for us to know that every question you're going to be seeing in um, the end class coming from management of care are all, the, all these topics, all these topics. So on the question banks, you see them at the end of your question. Let's assume you launch a question now and uh, you finish to answer the question. When you scroll down, it tells you management of care. Okay, it tells you management of care. Let 
The next slide. This is management of care. So I'll be dropping the test plan. You all go through it. And then this is safety and infection control. This is health promotion and maintenance. I'll be dropping the test plan. This is psychological integrity. Please go through this test plan and understand what is expected from each area because we've all done the mathematics and we've found out that 12 questions coming from pharmacological, you also need to do the maths and know the number of questions you're getting from each test plan. Okay, let's rush it, um, the, the risk reduction, fiscal adaptation and all that. Okay, we've discussed about the decision on when you fail or pass, the 95% confidence interval, when the computer determines that you're 95% um, confident to have passed the NCLEX, it pops up research. And then the next um, slide, we're going to be talking about um, <clears throat> the length of exam. Okay, like I said earlier, everyone from 1st of April will be getting, everyone on, from 1st of April will be getting, be getting three, three case study, case studies. Yes, kids, you're going to be getting three case studies. So look at this. This diagram is to tell you how your case study will be distributed. So the blue tick, the, the blue tick shows the blue tick here, the three blue tick here are the clinical judgment, the case studies. You know, we talked about clinical judgment and we say the clinical judgment measurement, we having two sets of questions. One is case study questions and each case study has six items. We also have standalone clinical judgment questions. They are just one. So the case study is what we are talking about. The case study, which is the six items each. The first one in the first quarter of your question, let's say 75, let's say you're going to get, let's assume you're going to get the minimum question, which is 85. So in, when you have attempted the first half of or the quarter of 85 question, you get your case study. So sometimes some people will get it first, some people will get it second, third, but in the first quarter of your 85 questions, you're going to be having a case study. The second quarter, you're going to have a, a case study. And the last quarter, you get this, a case study. So your case study, the three case studies are going to be distributed on your, on your end class day. But the standalone questions can come after your 85 question. Let's look at the next slide so that we explain that correctly. Okay, so on scored questions, I said on your NCLEX currently, you have 15 questions that are not scored. These 15 questions are questions the NCLEX uses to you know, test how difficult the questions are, how easy the questions are, how um, medium, maybe placing it on medium. So everyone will get the question, but the thing there is you cannot differentiate the, the ones that are unscored. So this is the distribution of these unscored questions. Sometimes the first 15 questions you see are actually unscored questions. Sometimes towards the end, they are unscored questions. Sometimes, so the reason is because every candidate to put in effort to answer questions accordingly, because those unscored questions will, will be added to the question bank to be scored later. But the reason they are not scored now they are testing those questions to know how difficult the questions are, depending on the way candidates are answering them, and then how easy they are and how if they are medium. The reason is because, like I said earlier, CAT generates questions based on your ability. So if you're a, an intelligent candidate, top notch, that's why we tell intelligent candidates that uh, it's not enough to pass the NCLEX, even those who are on average, you can pass the NCLEX because your questions will be coming according to your capability. And that's what the computer determines. Your first, second, third question, the computer will have determined. And... Yes. So let's look at the next slide. We have talked about um, the maximum length quest items. So when we looked at the map, um, slide, we talked about how these clinical judgment studies will be distributed for people who will be getting 85 questions. So if... Um, if at the end of the 80 question, research pop up like you, you test and you reach the maximum of the last question, that's currently now is 145. Who can tell me what it is now for engine? I talked about it. What's the maximum? 
for the NGN questions for those 150. exactly on the chat box okay okay so if you're going to be getting 150 questions you're going to be getting look at it this is the way your clinical judgment questions will be distributed like this parsley like the the other one if you're going to be getting 85 minimum question they will come in the first quarter second quarter and third because you're going to just get three for everybody so when you exceed 85 question you are at liberty to get as many as you want this is the way it's going to be okay let's look at the next slide this is your maximum length exam of the clinical judgment now let's practice question okay so before we talk about practice question because everyone will be involved in this uh, quest practice question i want active participation because we've talked about a lot of things and then i want us to actively participate to show that uh, we understood everything we talked about so i will be sharing my screen <coughs> I will be sharing my screen. I will be sharing my screen and I expect us to engage in the boss. Can you? Please mute, mute yourself. Mute yourself. Yeah. Everyone mute yourself. But Thank please you. mute everyone. I, at this point. We need to practice questions, so I want you to move everyone and only yeah. the host so that the questions yeah. are going to be coming on the chat box. Your answers will be coming from the chat box. Okay. All right. I've already made you um the host, so you can do the meeting on your side. Just go to the um uh what is it called participant button and then mute everybody. Okay. Huh? Okay, so if you can see my screen, raise your hand on the chat box if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Yeah. We're going to roll it now. Yeah, okay. They say they can see my screen. Okay. Okay, so can you still see my screen? Okay, so we're going to practice a few questions to know how well we have understood everything we've said. We're going to be seeing the question types play here. So I will be soliciting your response and then your response will be telling me your response will be telling me what to choose. And then if you are getting it correctly, yeah, if you're getting it correctly, we are going to move. If you are not getting it correctly, I want to throw more light on, on it. Okay, so on the chat box, yes, yes, they can see my screen. Okay, let's move. So this question says, now this is an example of um, a standalone question. This is an example of a standalone question. So I have a lot of distractions from people who are admitting, who are coming in. Okay, but you can see me and you can hear me now, right? Okay, so this is an example of standalone item, which is also a, that which also requires clinical judgment. So this is not a case study. This is a standalone clinical judgment question. So we have a lot of admissions. 
Okay, so the nurse is caring for a 44 year old male with abdominal pain and persistent nausea and vomiting. So you see a drop box here that talks about, um, oh, my network. Sorry. Let me launch the question again. Okay, so the question is back. I hope everyone can hear me and see me. You can hear me and see me, right? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, and you can see my screen. Okay. So this is an example, this is an example of a, a standalone item that is also a clinical judgment item. So this is not a case study. This is a standalone clinical judgment um, measurement question. So here you say the nurse is caring for a 44 year old male with abdominal pain, persistent nausea and vomiting. So let's drop down on the history. Abdominal pain that started one day ago following heavy alcohol. The pain is localized to the epigastric region. Persistent nausea and vomiting were reported. Physical exam showed enchymosis around the umbilicus and the tenderness upon palpation. Okay, let's look at the vital signs. Oral temperature is 99.0, which is 37 degrees. Pulse is 119. Respiration is 22. BP is 90 over 58. Saturation is 95%. Let's look at the lab values. The lab value says the white blood cell is high, 11,000. Sodium is slightly low. Potassium is within the normal range. Calcium is uh, low. In glucose 22, zero, bone 28, elevated, creatinine, elevated. Okay, now let's go to the question. So this is a bow tie question. You see it, right? A bow tie. So the first thing you're going to be doing is um, identifying the potential condition of this client. That's the first thing in this kind of bow tie question. Is a one item means a standalone question. And then remember, we talked about our scoring methods. Who can tell me the scoring method we'll be expecting from this bow tie? I talked about it. So let me see it on the chat box. What scoring method are we expecting on the chat box? Oh, that's, that's good, that's good. We're expecting a zero over one. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's go back. It means we all understood. Okay, so another thing we are going to be looking at from the cues, we talked about clinical judgment. That clinical judgment involves recognizing the cues. And I talked about the cues that they are the subjective and objective data of the patients that you get, which includes the lab values, the vital signs, patients complain, patient's diagnosis, patient's history. When you put all these things together, you're supposed to come with a hypothesis or, or a definitive diagnosis. That is, if you're sure, if not, you're going to be working with a hypothesis that maybe that could be the... So from what we have looked at, let me see on the chat box what we think this patient is having, potential condition of this patient. Let me see on the chat box. What do we think this patient is having? Okay, someone said pancreatitis. Okay, let's go, let's go. Pancreatitis, pran oh, awesome, 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 awesome. We are awesome. Okay, so from these cues, we were able to come up. Okay, that's good. So I'm going with your answer. I want us to get it correctly, and I also want us to get it incorrectly. So. So the reason is because if you get it correctly, it means kudos. Everyone is going with pancreatitis. That means everyone is awesome. Yeah, I see your score. I see, I see your response. Okay, okay. That's good. Now, the options, if you look at the options here, when you click on this option, you see there are options here. That was what I talked about, differential diagnosis. So let's assume 
you don't know how to identify pancreatitis. You know, you could, you could think it's peptic ulcer. You could think it's diverticulitis. You could think it is peritonitis. You could think it is gastroenteritis because they all have somehow related symptoms to this. So this is where you need to be very sure of your patient assessment. Okay, now let's talk about the action to take. Now from this um, acute pancreatitis and then action to take, what do we think we should do? Choose an action as nurses that we want to intervene. That's where in the clinical judgment, you now have the option of intervention. So NCLEX wants you to carry out an intervention after identifying patient's condition. So let's look on the chat box. What option are we all going for? What option are we all going for? Okay, free baby said IV fluid. Okay, more options. More options, more options. More options. IV fluid, Ademola, Omo. Oh, Priscilla says insulin. Okay. Somebody say NPO. Okay. Fluid, IV, and abdominal. I didn't get that. IV fluid, obtain history. Okay. So we have a lot of options. Okay. We have a lot of options. So when we look at these options, this is where your ability to intervene comes in from the client's diagnosis. We have option of obtaining a prescription of 0 0.9 saline bolus. We have inquire about the client's alcohol habits, obtain a prescription for regular insulin, establish peripheral intravenous access, transport the client for CT. Okay. So I will be going for establishing a peripheral intravenous access. The reason is because we have two actions to take, the up one and the down one. So the first thing I'll be going for is to establish a peripheral IV access because this patient is having acute pancreatitis, and my first action is I'm going to set in an IV fluid. So let's look at another action. What else do you think we need to do after that? Okay, so we should we, um, should we go for... Because even if you want to give your insulin, you may want to add it to your dextrose. I don't know what you mean by insulin, but we still need an IV access. So let's look at the options you guys are going for. So someone said, free baby says normal saline, saline bolus. Majority will carry the vote. Cynthia and Kim Dillon says IV. Insulin, someone said insulin. Do we not expect um, patient's glucose to be high with, with an expected finding? You know, you need to differentiate between an expected finding. Insulin is supposed to be high. Yeah, normal saline. Somebody says advice on this child. Look, we have not reached advice on which we're talking about the next action to take. Okay, so I have a lot of people going for normal saline. Okay, let's go for that. Then the parameter parameters to monitor, okay. So what should we be monitoring? What should we be monitoring? We have level of consciousness, we have bowel sounds, we have vital signs, we have serum sugar level and we have daily weight. Okay, so let me see the options you guys are going for. Okay, so I will intentionally be going for a wrong option so that we can get this scoring correctly. Okay, so someone said vital signs. Okay, Cynthia and Kendall said vital signs, sugar level, vital signs. I don't think the sugar level is a problem because um, we are, is expected level of consciousness and vital signs. Oh, Adeola, Omo. Okay. 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 So let's look at um, vital signs. Very important. We need to check patient's vital parameters to monitor. We need to monitor patient's level of consciousness. Remember, I said I want us to get wrong so that we can know how this looks like. But at the same time, I want us to get it correctly. So let's now look at the bow tie. The bow tie says, Complete the diagram by dragging from the choices below to specify what condition the client is most likely experiencing. Two priority action the nurse should take to address that condition. Two priority parameters the nurse should monitor to assess client's progress. And we identified it as acute pancreatitis. We say we are going to establish a peripheral IV access as our action. We are going to obtain a prescription of 0 0.9 saline bolus. We're going to 
monitor our patients' vitals and level of consciousness. So in this type of question, when you see item one over one, it means it's a clinical judgment question, but it's on standalone. Now let's click on the answer. Okay, so oh, I didn't want us to get it. Why did we get it correctly now? Okay, so we got all correct. It means everyone here is awesome. Like you guys understood everything. I want to see, I want to see your, I want to see your, your flying emoji. If you know you contributed to getting this answer correctly, I want to see your, your hands, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Oh, thumbs up. You are wonderful. You all are wonderful. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Mm, thumbs up. <laughs> we are, we are all correct. So it means we didn't waste our time. We really, really understood what we did. So now let's talk about the scoring method. I didn't want us to get it correctly. So we're going to be looking at the scoring method. But anyways, let's look at it. Because if you get it correctly, you're not going to be seeing the scoring method. What you're going to be seeing is your average pay. So that's why I wanted us to get it in one. Had it mean we got one incorrectly, you will have seen it will be four over five. One, two, three, four, five. But because we got the options correctly, they are now showing us the peer, average peer score. Is, that means people who have attempted this question, average, we're getting three over five. But we got it five over five, so top, thumbs up, thumbs up. So when you see the scoring method coming up is when you don't get it correct. Okay, okay, look at it, look at it here, look at it here. Five over five, that's your score max five over five and the scoring rule was zero over one. So initially when I asked about um, who knows the scoring method, you guys were dope and awesome. You knew it was zero over one and we all did well. We got five over five and the average pair was three over five. And this is a medium difficulty level question. Okay, so we have another standalone. Let's see, let's see if we can fill some so that we can see the scoring method, right? Should we try and fill some? Should we get all correctly? Someone said I tried small. Let me see your chat. What do you want us? Do you want to we want us to get all correctly or you want us to fill some? <laughs> okay, so let's look at another question. It says the nurse cares for a 75-year-old client who arrives at the emergency department. So let's drop down on client history and physical. The client at 19, oh, the client arrives with left facial drop, inability to move the left arm and leg, and expressive aphasia. Okay, let's see if we have people to admit. I don't know, we have been. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, let's admit them. Okay. Okay, so the client arrived with left facial drop, inability to move her arm and leg, and expressive aphasia. According to the husband, they were out eating dinner and the symptoms started suddenly and he fell on the ground. The symptoms started for five minutes prior to arrival at the ED. Past medical history includes atrial fibrillation, hypertension, DM, and hyperlipidemia. Now let's drop down on the vital signs. From the vital signs, patient has an elevated temperature, pulse is normal, respiration is elevated, blood pressure is, uh, of course, elevated, and oxygen saturation 95%. And the question says, complete the diagram. This is also a bow tie. Why are we getting bow tie? We should look at other options. So, okay, so uh, complete the diagram by dragging from the choices below to specify what condition the client is most likely experiencing. To actions the nurse should take to address that condition and two parameters the nurse should monitor to assess the client's progress. Okay, so look at the potential conditions. What do we think is this client's um, problem? Okay, so we have Bell's palsy, we have complex partial seizure, we have complex migraine, we have severe hypoglycemia, we have cerebral vascular accident. Okay, so from our cues, I want us to tell me what we are expecting. Let me get check the chat box. What are we saying? Oh, everywhere is CVA, everywhere, everywhere is CVA. Oh, we are awesome. Everywhere is CVA. Oh, so, so somebody said let's fail too. Okay, 
We're going to fail some. Yeah, we're going to fail some. But everyone is CVA. It means everyone is awesome. Everyone, Rita would just say CVA. Oh, then I'm your, I'm, your, I'm just, I'm just going to go for CVA then. Oh, I'm going to go for CVA. Oh, you guys are awesome. So let's action to take. What should we do? Mm. Should we transport the client for CT scan? Should we obtain a manual blood pressure? Should we prepare the client for lumbar? Is there a need for lumbar puncture? Should we do a laboratory work? Should we prepare the client for magnetic resonance imaging? So the first action we should take, you know, if you watch this drop box on the action to take and this one are going to be having the same options. So when you click one on this one, it goes off the option. Let's say I go for, okay, let me see, let me see, let me see what we have in the chat box. What do we have in the chat box? Mm. CT scan, CT scan, CT scan. A lot of people, somebody, okay, only pre-baby went for lab work. Okay, let's go for CT scan. The majority said CT scan. Ah, how can we get all correctly before? No, let's go for CT scan. Okay. Now let's look at another action to take. Mm, someone said, every test says, scan to determine this, the, the type of stroke. Okay, let's look at another, what, what other option do you think we have? We have gone for the CT scan. Oh, I don't want to give an expo, but look at this lab work. Are we not suspecting something? Okay, let's go. What other action? Lab work, lab work, manual check of BP, lab work. Okay, so lab work is going for the lab. A lot of people are going for lab work. Okay, this is going to be majority carrying the vote this time around. Boss is not going to contribute. I contributed the first time. Okay, so this time around is for everyone. Okay, so we have identified CVA and we say we are going to we are going to be taking this patient to the. Okay, so the parameters to monitor. Now I want to look at the parameters to monitor. What should we monitor? GCS, gait, vital sign, orthostatic blood pressure, and virtual acuity. Okay, let's look at the chat box. What is everyone going for? GCS, Priscilla said GCS, someone said vital signs. Okay. Let's go, vital science, vital science. Oh, vital science is going. CG, <laughs> you guys are too awesome. You guys are awesome. And in fact, this, in this next generation in class, I'm very sure you're going to be, you're going to all smashing it. Oh, vital science. So let's go for vital science. They have two parameters. So let's go for vital science here. Okay, so the next parameter, I don't want you all to get this question correctly. Okay, so the next option we have is, GCS, that's the glaucoma scale. Yes, now let's go for that. Let's click our answer. Awesome, but this NC, you have awesome candidates in this NC in Class Academy. And look at, just look at, four over five, Pierre got it correctly. And we got it five over five. Okay, and thank class you so is much. in trouble. Thank you. <laughs> and class is in trouble, guys. And class is in trouble. We are going to be acing and class very soon. I want to mm -hmm. say a special thank you to um Salamaris. We are really doing wonders. And if you leave Stella Maris here, I bet you she's not going to leave this platform. She's going to continue doing questions with you guys. That is exactly what um uh, could, uh, the assignees, the people that were assigned to her, always say she will follow you up and she will make sure that you are on top of your game when it comes to answering questions. So you are not going to do that to me today. I've written my own class, so you have to wait so that I can go and do other things. We will schedule another time for us to follow up on this. But before we bring her back on the forum on this virtual class, we're going to be having an interesting addition. It's going to be me coming on board, talking to you guys on um, agency. That's after NCLEX. We're going to be talking about direct hospital hire versus agency. I will, I will bring all the truth that you need to know. Because there's a lot of people that are just petting the, the issue. I've gone through a lot of uh, people talking and they are just, they're not saying the real thing. I have seen the both sides of the coin. Okay, and I'm going to give you people the undiluted fact about direct hospital hire and um, agency nursing. Okay, so keep a date, keep 
staying on our uh, platforms, the virtual classrooms, and you are going to get the information of when we are going to hold that class. In the meantime, I'll just want Boss Telamaris to say one or two final words, then we can bring the class to a close. If you don't know, we have spent close to two hours plus, almost three hours, because we had to end and uh, come back again and the rest of them. But we have been here for quite a long time. I know most of you have things to do. We are going to be coming on board to you guys and we're going to be treating next generation and class questions. We'll take it one after the other. Like one day we'll just dedicate it to bow ties and we'll just do lots of bow ties. The next day we'll come back and do lots of another, maybe clothes or any other um, any other um, um, segment or category of questions that we'll choose will come. That day we'll just scatter all the questions. That way and class will become familiar to you on the day you're taking the exam. That is the main, the main goal is to make you acquainted to all these questions, even before you get to the, um, uh, a, before you get to your writing centers, okay? So thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And uh, Stella Maris, over to you. Give us your final words. Okay, so my final word for you is, uh, I have a lot of myths uh, people give about NCLES. Intelligent, they say intelligent people can pass, some say, those who are not intelligent, 50 and above campus. So my word for you today is that no matter the kind of candidate you are, nobody was born a genius. Even if you were born a genius and you do work towards it, you cannot get to the peak. So your age, your, your, whether you're 50, 60, I have candidates who have, have helped a candidate who was 53 years and she passed this month and she was my first, you know, for this match, she was my best gift because I made sure I encouraged her to pass the English. So we know, I know the struggle we all are going through in Nigeria here. I want us to all be USRNs. It is not difficult just putting the work with children, with um, work, with husband. You can do it. If I can do it, anybody else can do it. So average candidate put in the work, above average candidate put in the work, practice questions because the developing critical thinking, developing clinical judgment, and then knowing how to prioritize needs you to practice questions and practice questions. So once you practice questions, you're going to be at the peak of passing the NCLEX. So like Bozicensi say, we love you in the NCLEX Academy. And ever since I joined this academy, it has always been about helping nurses to, you know, pass the NCLEX. The passion is there, it's just the passion. I'm passion driven. And this St. Clair's Academy is passion driven to ensure that we all ace the end once. And even if you're a repeat test taker with this St. Clair's Academy, you are short of passing the end class. So let's move to 1st of April and allay our fears and ensure that we are practicing. Thank you for joining us. And we wish to see you more on our academy. Subscribe to our, uh, what someone say? Subscribe to our one on one, subscribe to our content class, subscribe to our rebranded class. All our lecturers and our tutors, our firebrand, our boss decency is transmitting his brain to us, and everyone is going to put hand on the decks to ensure that you pass your English. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, boss. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. No too much talks. We believe that you guys have actually benefited from the program. I saw how you were answering questions. I joined, I followed. Everything went smoothly, except for the glitch that we had in the beginning. But on the on the on the um overall, I would say it was a good outing. We we're able to at least grab one or two things. But today is not enough for us to finish all that there is about next generation and class. So we are going to be coming to you guys again with this virtual class at another time. And that time we're going to be selecting categories of these questions and treating them individually. Okay. In the meantime, I want to say a very big thank you to um, Boss Telamaris for finding time to not just come for the program, but despite the glitch, stay with us and still help helped to deliver this amazing lecture. Thank you so much, uh, Stella Maris. And also, I want to thank everyone that made it to this program today. You are, you are all special. 
I can't just wait to see you all in the soil of the United States because that's where you all belong. And like I always tell my people, people that are close to me, I tell them that you're already a USRN unless you decide not to become one. Okay, so the only thing that separates you from becoming a USRN is you. Because by the time you make up your mind to become one, start putting in actions towards it. Before you know it, you will be in this place. Most of us that are talking to you today, we have been in Nigeria too. There was a time when there was no information about how to become a USRN. Anybody that migrated would tell you it was God. But today the information are there. And today you are very, you can you can get that information free of charge without even having to be scammed so many times. I know a lot of people that have been scammed a lot of times just because they want to come over to the United States. But what I want to say is keep staying true to your dream, keep walking towards it. It's not going, I'm not promising you that the road is going to be easy. You know, there's finances to go down, there is a lot of commitments, a lot of sacrifices to be made. But in the long run, it is going to be a decision that is worth uh, do, um, taking, okay? It's going to be one of the best decisions you have ever taken. A lot of people have questions. I'm going to take about one or two questions today before we round it up. I'm going to give you opportunity of asking us questions. Um, you can ask me, you can ask Telemaris, then we'll just round up the program. I take questions from all corners anything you can think about just um two minutes in short two questions and then we are we are done for today if you have any question raise up your hand and i'll call you all right okay, boss. we have someone who says please do someone